Hey all, here OS Reviews. In this video, we're taking a look at a haul of useful slash more premium tech gadgets from Timu, one of the fastest growing shopping sites that serves as an alternative to platforms like AliExpress, however, often with more aggressive coupons and sales, which speaking of, for those interested, feel free to reference the promo code above to get a $100 coupon bundle that's available for all customers. So here's the thing, although Timu has gone viral primarily for selling less expensive items, which is more generic, but that's a situation that is changing because like any platform, you're able to find a variety of sellers, which is why in this video, I wanted to do something a little bit different. Instead of focusing on more novelty items, which are only a dollar or five dollars, I wanted to check out some more premium brands that are more reputable and see how those products perform if we order them from Timu. Because increasingly, you can find more more and more sellers on there, including brands such as CMF or Nothing, such as their phones, not to mention other partners and authorized resellers, including Samsung, also jumping into Timu now as well, in addition to Lenovo, just as a few examples. Because again, the popularity of the site means there are more brands that are willing to now sell their items on this site that can reach a wider audience. And as always, this is an honest review, so all of the thoughts and opinions that you're about to hear are my own. And as with most of these haul type videos, it's going to be a little longer. So feel free to reference the timestamps down below if you wanted to skip into a particular product that you're interested in learning more about. So the first item on my list is going to be a smartphone. It's the Realme Note 50. I've always wanted to try out a smartphone from Timu, so this is a great opportunity. And Realme, for those unfamiliar, is a brand that's owned by the same subsidiary as OnePlus as well as Oppo. So it's a similar relationship as Honor and Huawei or Redmi and Xiaomi. So I was surprised that one of their devices can actually be found on the site for less than $100, often goes on sale for less than that. And there's quite a few different listings or sellers offering these fully unlocked 4G LTE device. And there are two configurations, one with three gigs and the other with four gigs of RAM plus 128 gigabytes of built-in storage. The four gigabyte of RAM variant, by the way, also has virtual RAM expansion. So you can borrow four gigabytes of additional storage space to act as virtual RAM, giving you a total of eight gigabytes. Comes in two colors, either a blue or a black. And some of the specs include a large 6.74 inch display with a 90 hertz faster refresh rate, pretty slim at only eight millimeters, nearly 5,000 milliamp hour capacity battery with a 13 megapixel rear camera with a design that definitely looks more expensive than the price would imply. Has kind of that visor look reminiscent of some of the earlier Google Pixel phones. A couple of other notable specs include a decent screen to body ratio thanks to a slightly smaller or more narrow cutout for the water drop notch compared to the Xiaomi Redmi A3X, which is another competitor that's selling for under $100. And it also has some UI tricks that will simulate kind of a dynamic island when you get incoming notifications. Honestly, it's quite surprising to see a Realme slash Oppo device that is sitting at such a low price point because this is a market segment that Xiaomi with their Redmi line used to have a chokehold on until Samsung's Galaxy A series started to also become more competitive. And now it seems like Realme is starting to take this segment seriously as well. And now even maybe beating Xiaomi at their own game because the aforementioned Redmi A3X, I would say is its biggest competitor, and by contrast, it has larger bezels, it also has a weaker processor, not to mention a 8 megapixel camera compared to 13 on this one. Kind of an incredible turn of events, because back in the day, Oppo phones were known for looking really sleek and stylish, but charging a bit of a premium for that, not necessarily giving you the best specs for value, but now again under the Realme line, this is changing. The phone even is rated against splashes with IP54 dust and and water resistance, and they claim to have a two-year performance fluency guarantee, which is quite ambitious, I shall say, because it still is a relatively entry-level processor inside, but they claim that the UI that they've optimized Android with should still feel smooth after a longer-term use. Also, unlike the Redmi A3 slash A3X, Realme still gives you an included TPU rubber case as part of that really low price. So you can protect the phone without having to purchase an extra accessory there, a quick user guide. And then down below here, we have, of course, just the phone itself. Even a SIM card ejector pin is also included. 
in addition to a standard USB Type-C to Type-A charging and data cable, plus a wall adapter is even provided in the box. Again, things that are just rarer and rarer to find in this day and age. Granted, this is a pretty standard 10 watt charging speed, so the SuperVoc branding here is not going to be as powerful as on their flagship phones that can offer something crazy like 60 or even 100 watt charging these days. But considering this is effectively a sub $80 smartphone, I would say it's more than acceptable. Otherwise, a factory pre-applied screen protector is even included, so it helps protect the screen from scratches. And first impressions being that for a device with a 5000 mAh capacity battery inside, it is surprisingly slim and pretty lightweight. And it's kind of rare to see this level of attention to detail from a design perspective on such an affordable phone, but again it's leveraging some of those oppo dna in making the aesthetics just shine a little bit more and really gone are the days where a budget phone used to look a lot more boring uh, and just generic next to it as you can tell so this is really quite fashionable maybe the only thing to keep in mind though is again at 6.7 inches it's by no means a small phone perhaps best suited for folks that have slightly larger hands but again at least it's not too heavy as you're using it now located on the right hand spine is going to be a power key slash fingerprint scanner a feature that just a year or two ago we didn't really see on phones at this price point, so you get that added security now. In addition to a volume rocker, the rear here houses that primary 13 megapixel autofocus camera and also a depth sensor for portraits or bokeh shots and also an LED flash. Bottom houses a standard 3.5mm headphone jack, always great to see, in addition to the Type-C port for charging and a single loudspeaker. And also you get that SIM slash micro SD card slot for further expanding the built-in memory. There's also double tap to wake the screen, and the fingerprint scanner is pretty fast and reliable. This is actually my first time taking a look at Realme's skin on top of Android, and it's definitely quite colorful. It's reminiscent of Color OS, found on Oppo and increasingly OnePlus, but this device comes with all of the standard Google apps pre-installed, in addition to the Google Play Store, plus Realme throws in some of their extra utility functions like a voice recorder as well as a compass, which are thoughtful little extras. That being said, this model does not come with FM radio support, nor will you get built-in NFC, so that's something to keep in mind, although there is GPS as well as built-in Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and now I will say that Realme's UI has a little bit of duplication at times, but the same can be argued for Samsung's One UI as well. For instance, they have their own app market, aka App Store, in addition to the regular Google Play Store, in addition to Realme's version of a web browser app, but you already have Google Chrome built in as well. Not to mention Realme's version of a Photos app, in addition to regular Google Photos, is on here. So there are two kind of applications for performing many of the same functions, but at least you're able to choose what service you prefer. Now, otherwise, there are plenty of other small customization details details in this particular UI, including plenty of colorful and vibrant looking wallpapers they can use to change the way the phone looks. The track down notification drawer also has slightly different icons versus stock Android. Again, a little bit more reminiscent of say One UI with its rounded nature, but still looks attractive enough, allowing us to activate features like live captions as well as screencasting in addition to turning on and off wireless options. Now we can also drag down in the middle of the screen to pull up a universal search. It's also a good opportunity to see that the screen, again, has a pretty solid overall, I would say, screen to body ratio. It seems decent for a budget phone. There's just a slightly larger chin at the very bottom, but even that is really not bad compared to budget phones of yesteryear. Although, of course, brightness levels are not going to be as high as a more expensive OLED or AMOLED display, but it can still reach nearly 600 nits. In more shaded regions, it still looks decent, and also the contrast isn't bad for a LCD screen, as you can tell here. Additional properties that you can adjust include a more vivid option versus more color accurate, as well as a neutral such warmer color temperature based on your preferences, and again, the refresh rate, you can dial down something like 60 hertz if you prefer, elongating the battery life. Although, again, 90 hertz, I would personally just leave on since it makes scrolling through the UI feel a little bit more snappy and responsive. Which, speaking of, the phone is powered by the Unisoc T612 processor, which again is a little faster than the T606 found on the Redmi A3X. And it definitely makes a slight difference when you're navigating around the UI. Honestly, it doesn't feel too choppy or sluggish, particularly if you give it just a moment after 
after it first starts up, and afterwards I think it's more than serviceable. It benchmarks similarly to some of the older Snapdragon 600 series processors, meaning for the basics when it comes to just general navigation, it shouldn't be too problematic as you can tell here, and also the added virtual RAM expansion makes a difference, so it's quite helpful to turn this on when you are multitasking, and some firmware updates as well as security updates will also be pushed over. I already received one or two since setting up this device. The phone can easily last me around two days before I have to recharge it again, although topping it back up can be a little slower because of the 10 watt speed, taking around two hours and a half. Here's also a quick look at Realme's version of that dynamic island kind of animation in action, so it expands to show you status like charging info as well as incoming calls and alarms, taking advantage of the slightly smaller bezels on here as well. So not bad, it's a pretty complete software ROM experience. And particularly in the 128GB version, I would say there's enough storage space that doesn't feel too slow or choppy either, even with some of those extra apps. Otherwise, briefly looking through some of the extra utility functions here, including this is the weather app. Here's also a peek into the camera UI, so again, it's not going to be anything extraordinary because at the end of the day still a budget phone but still 13 megapixels gives you a little bit more detail versus the Redmi A3's sensor. Features here include HDR, a beauty mode, as well as scene filters that you can apply on top of your images, and there is AI scene recognition as well which will increase the contrast of certain photos depending on if you're pointing at flowers versus food for example. Google Lens support is here as well and video can be recorded up to full HD 1080p resolution. There's a night mode that slightly increases the exposure time in lower light environments as well as again the portrait mode which will blur the background using the secondary depth sensor plus under more you can find time lapse, panorama as well as a pro mode changing ISO and exposure settings in a more granular way. So here's a quick peek at some of the results. Overall, really not bad, particularly if you are in well-lit outdoor environments. You can still get some pleasing enough looking shots. Again, it's not going to beat the latest iPhone or Pixel, but there's a huge difference in price here. And at least it is better than some of the smaller phone manufacturers out there. In fact, it can even give you some surprises from time to time. It can focus pretty quickly up close. So this is a tiny little flower, and you get that nice, again, background blur which makes the camera, again, just look a little bit better than you will expect for such a low-cost phone. HDR is also doing a decent job of still keeping the skies in the background preserved with some textures. I'll also mention that, again, the display looks quite good from a color perspective, or to say IPS LCD, although resolution is standard kind of HD+, plus, so it's 720p, not really full HD or 1080, but then again, for an $80 phone, it is kind of expected, and as long as you're not really pixel peeping or looking super close, it still is a nice visual experience that gets the job done. The only maybe missing functions would be a ultra wide angle lens or a telephoto for zoom, but again kind of expected emissions at this price point. So optimization from Realme's part is not bad at all on such a low cost device. Again it just feels a bit more polished than you'll expect. A few more examples of other applications including web browsing, you can tell that loading speeds are also reasonable enough, pinch to zoom feels fine as well, so overall processing speed it's not going to be too irksome for just casual usage on tasks like these, and in terms of reception quality I was also pretty impressed with both Wi-Fi as well as cellular connectivity with T-Mobile. I was getting almost full bars in fact in both instances because of the plastic chassis, and so staying connected was generally not a problem either. Here's also a quick video playback test. So I take away that, again, it's a pretty decent visual experience because of the large 6.7 inch screen, and overall the speaker quality is decent. Again, stereo would have been better, but you can always plug in standard headphones or use Bluetooth instead if desired. Simple animations like picture-in-picture -picture mode still perform decently. Realme even gives you their own built-in music player app, which is handy. So if you wanted to use this as an MP3 player, again plugging in standard headphones, that could be another application uh, for a lower cost device like this. And here's also a quick look at a simple tap and go style game and see how it fares, and for the most part actually not doing too bad I would say. It may take a moment or two longer when you're first jumping into the program for the first time, but afterwards things are still doing decently, I would say. There's really nothing from the Play Store that you're not able to download and kind of try out, including social media apps, even slightly heavier ones like PUBG or Asphalt, if you really lower the graphic settings, are surprisingly still going to be a 
playable experience. Again, it's not really a gamer phone per se, but for casual titles, uh, as well as again for entertainment, things like this, you can still get by with some of the basics, actually doing a little bit better than expected. The phone does get a little bit more warm if you're pressing it for longer than 30 or 40 minutes in this particular region, but it's not bad. It doesn't really thermal throttle either, so the performance has been relatively consistent. So there we have it. That's just been a closer look at the Realme Note 50, and I have to say this might be one of the best sub $80 phones that I've ever tried out. The software is quite polished, as expected from a slightly larger brand. It's a surprisingly good value, which again, almost beats Xiaomi at their own game. Great to see competition cropping up, starting to challenge that, which is ultimately benefiting us as consumers. Obviously, there's a couple of minor quirks and shortcomings from a feature perspective, but we have come a really long way, and now a device like this is more than usable enough, I would say, for just the basics. Quite impressive overall. And speaking of Xiaomi, the next two items are going to be from them. Even though they're best known for making phones, they have of course branched out into many types of lifestyle products. We're taking a look at two of those. The first one is going to be a mini Bluetooth speaker called the Xiaomi Sound Pocket. This one has also won a Red Dot Design Award here in 2024. Sold at under 20 bucks. Now another newer development that I have seen on Timu lately has been an increasing amount of listings that state local warehouse. So any of the products that you see labeled like this means that the inventory is in your local local country. For example, in the United States, uh, there are some of the merchandise being stored here, and as a result, you can get them even faster. So if you place an order, they will mostly arrive in just say four or five days, compared to some of the older listings if they're shipping it from China may take a little bit longer, but even those typically arrive in just around two weeks. Now it uses pretty up-to-date Bluetooth 5.4 audio Kodak and does support TWS stereo mode, so if you purchase two of them they can act as a left and right channel splitting the sound. Very lightweight at only 200 grams, and of course it's going to be IP rated for waterproof, splash proof if you're taking it to the pool, it should still survive, having a built-in lanyard and a microphone phone as well that you can use to make phone calls. And Xiaomi, again, I don't really think needs too much of an introduction. For those that are unfamiliar, they are kind of the third smartphone brand globally based on volume of sales, officially one of the Fortune 500 global companies. And again, they've started to branch out even into EVs, electric cars, TVs, all types of tech and electronic items these days, which is kind of a crazy success story considering they started off making just phones. Some other specs here include 5 watts for the driver, and it promises 10 hours of continuous playback for you can top it up in just under two hours. Interestingly, the packaging here actually looks like it's in Thai on the back, instead of say English or Chinese. So it goes to show that Xiaomi is also branching out into many countries these days, across Asia, as well as Europe, where some of their products are just extremely popular. And inside you'll find just a quick USB Type-C charging cable, pretty standard stuff, and a user guide. So the speaker itself is in fact really compact, making it easy to take with you when you're on the go, but still going to be much fuller sounding with a built-in passive radiator for added bass compared to any smartphone or a computer speaker that is. And I do like the way it looks with this kind of fabric cover, reminiscent of some of the Google Home Mini smart speakers as well, located on this orange strap, which is Xiaomi's color scheme. You also get the flap covering up the Type-C port for charging, preventing water from getting in, and located on the very top are two dimples that act as a power key as well as Bluetooth for pairing. And finally on the other side, this is also where you can see the drivers kind of vibrate when music is playing back. Located on the edge is going to be a play pause as well as volume controls, which are all pretty tactile and clicky. So this might be also an interesting alternative to something like a JBL mini Bluetooth speaker as well as some soft touch feet when you're setting it down so it doesn't really move around. Here's also the boot up chime. So there are no voice prompts here, it's all just using simple beeps and chimes, which sound quite elegant. Now moving into a quick audio playback demo.
and turning things down, overall takeaway is audio quality is really quite impressive for something that is so small, a pocket sized mini speaker. You have that again added bass with the passive radiator here on the side, but then the main speakers on the front are responsible for the trebles as well as the mids, giving you surprisingly impactful sound from something again so small. Very little hints of distortion or static. Not too much latency here either because of the up-to-date Bluetooth 5.4 Kodak, so the audio and also the video are pretty much synced together. You can definitely enjoy YouTube or Netflix really without any problems. A great party speaker, travel speaker just to take with you when you're on the go, I would say. So like many Xiaomi products that we've tried in the past, this one just really works as expected. Next item is going to be the Xiaomi Mi Electric Precision Screwdriver. This one goes for around $30, and it's another one that I was kind of surprised to find that Xiaomi actually makes one of these. You have two adjustable speeds with a pretty minimalistic design crafted out of aluminum alloy as well as steel, and it's magnetic, so all the bits and pieces will just pop into the case by themselves when you're not using it, making the process of assembly or DIY projects just a little bit easier. You don't have to really press or exert as much pressure or force. Xiaomi also touts many safety functions with the design as well as the battery rated to be drop, shock, and temperature proof. Here is the rotational power of the motor inside, recharges using USB Type-C, and claims to last around 400 screws uh, before you have to recharge it again, taking around an hour and a half to top up. And more specifically, there are 24 different size tips inside that can open up, again, majority of products, including watches, phones, laptops, so on and so forth. And there are six kind of longer heads at 45 millimeters and 18 slightly shorter 28 millimeter size ones. And by the way, on the side of the box, we can see all the different types of tips that it supports. And inside the box, we have, of course, the screwdriver with its carrying case. We'll take a closer look at it in a moment. It's crafted out of aluminum alloy, so it does feel really cold and reassuring, quite premium to the touch. We also have a standard USB Type-C charging cable and then the user guides. It is pretty well documented. What is interesting here though is there's a separate sheet that is about the original manufacturer which seems to be called Hoto. So it seems like Xiaomi might be partnering with this brand to technically bring this particular item to market instead of making it completely in-house themselves. Uh, similar to how on their Xiaomi Mi Band, so those smart fitness trackers slash smartwatches are technically manufactured by Amazfit which also now creates their own wearables as well. But this is the one that's branded by Xiaomi me just leveraging the expertise of that other co-partner brand. Push on the top to basically expand and see all the parts of the screwdriver. It then just locks in again if you give it another push. So there's a kind of spring assisted design and the actual screwdriver including the different heads are again magnetically held into place uh, just making it a little easier for you to then pop everything back in and if you are accidentally dropping this thing it's not going to fall out. Again all the pieces are presented and labeled in a fairly detailed way so you're able to more precisely know which size you want to use and the actual screwdriver has a very premium aluminum alloy unibody feel almost like something that Apple for example would make and you have just two keys for the different directions of twisting clockwise or counterclockwise the actual screw and the pieces just again fit in magnetically so it's a very simple mechanism that feels quite elegant, snapping into place and then you're ready to use it. The grip also makes it still quite comfortable to hold. And then on the rear here, you can change between the two speed dials as well as again, charge it using standard USB type C. So we're gonna start off in the first speed mode. The middle, by the way, is turning it completely off and we can now begin to again, twist on the top and it will start to rotate. So the speed you can completely control just by kind of pressing for longer, it will of course twist for longer as well, but the moment that you release it basically stops. It looks like the torque and motor in there are quite precise. And voila, just a couple of seconds later, we're able to open up watches for replacing batteries and parts, making again DIY projects a lot easier. Plus the fact that the heads here are magnetic, so they can hold on to the tiny screws more easily. So glad to report that it works pretty much exactly as advertised, pretty easy to control as well. And also because the keys here are made out of rubber and slightly protrude from the surface, if you set it down onto a table, it's not gonna roll around too easily there either because of this kind of end piece. 
So it's a well-engineered electric screwdriver that is simple, but does exactly what it's supposed to do. When you're done, just simply pop it back into its little carrying case until the next time you need to use it, again for assembling furniture, as well as different projects. A pretty convenient tool here overall. And the next item is going to be a transparent Bluetooth speaker, the DKM8. I've always thought transparent tech is quite cool, whether it comes to phones, power banks, which are see-through, there are even transparent screens these days. So I want to take a closer look at this one and see whether a transparent speaker can deliver decent audio or not. The design of this one might also be a little bit inspired by the Xiaomi More Art, which is another transparent design speaker. However, the difference is Xiaomi's version does have a again, transparent OLED screen, so it shows the lyric art information as you're playing back music. That being said, this particular model does not have, again, that built-in screen function, so it's just a speaker, though it does have a RGB LED strip, which will still make it glow in the dark. So the design is still pretty futuristic and unique looking, and they call it a glass transparent speaker. It sells for around $30 or so, comes in two colors, black as well as white, and the 2000 mAh capacity battery inside should last roughly 10 hours of continuous audio playback. It's an 8 watt speaker with a dedicated passive radiator for bass uh, before you have to recharge it again. So decent battery endurance using a pretty up-to-date Bluetooth 5.1 Kodak. You can also use it as a wired speaker as well. Interestingly, the front and the back of the box show the black and white colors respectively. So inside here we have of course just the speaker itself. We have the white version and quick accessories include just a 3.5 millimeter audio cable if you want to use it as a wired speaker, quick user guide, and a standard USB type C charging cable. Removing the film over the plexiglass, And it's now crystal clear. It really is quite cool looking, I have to admit. You can see everything there in the back. Of course, if you are touching the glass, you have to wipe it down. Still, it's very minimalistic looking, particularly when compared to other quote-unquote transparent tech, which can show some of the circuitry inside, but it's not completely see-through like this one, where you can see kind of your hand here in the back as well. There's just a simple dial here that you can rotate for changing properties like volume. You can kind of make out the LED lights there on the very top, and there's also some soft-touch rubber feet that that will prevent it from sliding around. Additional passive radiator for bass here at the very bottom. And although the speaker here is crafted predominantly out of plastic, it has a decent overall heft and weight to it. On the very back here, we can also see that mounted knob as well as that driver there. And also on the edge is gonna be the auxiliary port as well as the USB type C charging port. And speaking of charging, I do want to also do a quick demo here because when you plug it in, there is a red LED light, which is a little bit more visible when all of the surrounding lights here are dimmed, but it makes the rear window here kind of light up in this almost laser-like form. And now turning it on, we can long press on the knob. And before we jump into a quick music demo, you can see this is the LED light that we can turn on. This is a green mode, but we can also go into a kind of aura light mode that will slowly transition into other colors that it's capable of, as well as a white color mode. Looks quite neat, I have to admit, particularly when you're kind of looking down at it, you can't really see the lights on the top. Uh, it just looks like a illuminated box there. And again, just using the touch control on the edge here to transition into the other colors. So it can act as a decent mood lamp or night light there in the background as well with those energy efficient LEDs. And here it is against a wall or surface. You can tell the light will become a little bit more highly concentrated and visible. So against this kind of, again, white surface, I think it looks a little bit more dramatic as well. So not a bad looking effect, I have to admit, for a speaker that is relatively affordable. Neat that they were able to hide all the circuitry and wires from view. And now moving into a quick audio demo, the lights, by the way, are also reactive, so they will flash with the beat of the sound.
volume output is definitely much louder compared to any phone speaker or laptop speaker uh, because of the larger drivers in here and the passive radiator on this, although not massive, still produces some vibrations when you're listening to drum beats, EDM, and pop music for it to add a little kick in the background. And connectivity also wasn't too problematic, I would say, again, thanks to a relatively up-to-date Bluetooth chip, so there wasn't too much latency for things like consuming YouTube videos, and obviously for music and podcasts. And as you saw in that demo, even when playing back music, you can still cycle through other effects, including an always-on mode, or you can turn the lights completely off if you want to consume even less power. Is it the best sounding speaker in the world? Probably not. In fact, I would say the Xiaomi Pocket Bluetooth speaker is actually about the same, if not even a little bit better in terms of fidelity and detail, but again, you are just paying a bit more here for that design. And I suppose some would say that the transparent design might be a little gimmicky, but I personally think it is just pretty cool as a conversation piece if you are looking for something a little different. Slight downsides though would be there is no IP rating, obviously, for a design like this because the drivers are exposed, so you can't really get this one wet. Nor does it have a handle, it's not going to be as robust and durable because it is just made out of glass. But all in all, really not bad from a design point of view. Now, in the past, we have seen some other optical illusion effect humidifiers uh, that have, for example, a flame effect, which is using just LEDs underneath, which makes the water and mist look like it's a fire, even though it's cool to the touch. In contrast, this one uses a special frequency of blinking lights to create the illusion that the droplets of water are actually flowing upwards instead of downwards. So as another quirky, unique tech gadget, I wanted to take a closer look at one. This one sells for under 20 bucks, pretty affordable, and in addition to being a humidifier, which can be helpful in the winter time to add a bit of moisture to the air, preventing it from getting too dry, or even in the summer, just to cool you off a little bit. There's also a small clock on this model, which can tell you the time, and the actual mist is coming up from the top. So the water droplet section is kind of like a fountain. It's just continuously running using a pump. So in the packaging, we have just the humidifier itself, in addition to a standard USB Type-C cable for power, as well as a quick user guide. The humidifier itself is constructed out of just polycarbonate plastic, and we have just the LED display, and on top there are touch controls for power, as well as setting the time. Bottom here just features some LED lights that will be blinking to create that illusion, and also the Type-C port for power here on the rear. There is no battery, so it needs to be plugged in continuously if you want to turn it on, although you can also drive it with a power bank. Some soft touch rubber feet at the very bottom as well to prevent it from sliding around. And we're able to twist on this in order to pop out this little bottom section where you can fill up the water up to the line here. Now filled with water, let's pop it onto life. After just a split second, you can see that the water droplets there seem to be, again, moving upwards because of the frequency of the flashing. And also the humidifier is also functioning. There is mist coming out from the top as well, a very fine particle. Maybe a little bit easier to make out if we shine kind of a flashlight over here as well. Let's also dim some of the surrounding lights in the room and the effect of the kind of reverse water droplets also becomes a little bit stronger. Pretty cool. You can also tap on the key here once to transition into a normal fountain mode if you're a little bit of white noise of just water there falling, maybe helping you relax a little bit, and the mist here continues to function. Tapping on it once again will turn it completely off, including the fountain as well as the mist. And to change the time, you can tap on the menu key for a couple of seconds until it starts to flash, and you can increase and decrease the hour as well as the minutes. It doesn't seem like this works as an alarm, however, so it's only for telling the time, nor does it act as a timer so that the entire thing turns off after, say, X hours of use. And as a fairly low-cost humidifier, there's also no smart app compatibility on this model, so unfortunately you can't really bind it with your phone to control it from afar. In addition, you can't really change the color of the flashing lights, it's always going to be a white color uh, there in the background, but definitely is a very trippy looking optical illusion there on your desk. You can see the flashing a little bit more from the camera, however this flashing frequency is actually invisible to the human eye. It looks like just a normal lamp that's continuously on when I'm looking at it in person, so it's not too distracting or annoying either. And if we zoom in a little bit closer, we can technically kind of tell that it is a continuous stream, it's just the beats there again are creating that effect of the water falling in reverse. So out of all the items that we've seen thus far in this haul, I would say this one is perhaps the least premium per se, however it still is very cool, so I still wanted to briefly share it in this particular haul.
Maybe one other mode they could consider adding in the future though would be having the optical illusion fountain separated from the mist humidifier. Right now they are connected, so if you turn it off, both of those functions will be off. It would be nice to control them independently though if, for example, you wanted to turn off the fountain and only have the mist working. But right now if you turn one off, the other one is off as well. And so if we play something like a cup down below, we can see that the water will still be getting collected and the cup will continuously fill up higher and higher. The illusion is kind of broken there, but still very trippy. And if you wanted to, you can also pour the water back into the top section here. And last but not least, the final item in today's haul is going to come from Basius. It's a USB Type-C cable, which in itself is nothing particularly special, but I do really like Basius products. We've checked out a lot of their items in the past when it comes to wireless headphones, in addition to even power banks and other peripherals, and I think of them as a solid alternative to Anchor as well as Xiaomi ecosystem brands. The majority of their products are pretty high quality, despite an affordable price point. For example, this particular fast charging cable goes for less than $3 a pop. In fact, I've actually been using a red version of their charging cable for the past three years and it still functions as my daily driver for charging laptops and smartphones. So durability has been quite good. The cable should be smart enough to stop charging once battery reaches 100%, claims to not overheat, and works with any Type-C device supporting up to 100 watt, so rapidly charging up smartphones as well as laptops alike. BCS also claims additional strands inside for added durability on this particular model crafted out of this kind of nylon material. You can find it in either one or two meter long lengths and it also works with data transmission if you're trying to copy files back and forth from a computer to a phone. So again the product itself is nothing that we haven't seen before but Basius is a brand that I personally trust with many phone peripherals and tech accessories so I think it's also fitting to include them in this particular haul. Anyways packaging here is quite simple. Now this particular message everyone is using Basius might be a little over ambitious even though I like this brand and they do have millions of fans and users across the world but that slogan might be a little too much nonetheless on the back you can also scratch off the sticker to check if it's an authentic product or not packaged in just a ziplock bag and in addition to the cable itself we also get just a quick user guide. Sadly though, this might be the first Basius product I've checked out, which doesn't give you a sticker pack in the box anymore. This is something that came with the last USB Type-C cable I purchased three years back, and it's still included on all of their other items that we've seen recently, like their wireless headphones and power banks, but of course those are more expensive items as well. So this might be one example of slight cost cutting it's a little bit of a shame because I thought it was a playful, thoughtful touch, which added to the presentation and made the products feel a little bit more personalized and higher quality. Anyways, we do get a Velcro strap here that ties the cable together, and the actual cable is indeed made out of this fabric material that doesn't tangle too easily. The tips, though, are crafted entirely out of aluminum alloy, so it feels quite durable. We have just the Basius logo. And the inside is also accented orange, which just makes it look a little bit more unique. It would be nice, though, if Basius also continued manufacturing other colors, like they did a few years back, such as red-colored cables, in addition to maybe other colors like yellow or blue, just to make it feel even more personalized. But nonetheless, it definitely feels fairly high quality. And then yes, charging works pretty much exactly as advertised. You'll be able to pretty rapidly juice up smartphones and computers alike without any real problems. Again, we're far from the days where Type-C cables and accessories are anything new, but at least these are fairly high quality and a reliable brand overall that would put on the same caliber as again, Anchor as well as Xiaomi. So there we have it. That's been just another haul of, again, tech gadgets from Timu, focusing on slightly more unique design or more trustworthy brands. So it kind of breaks the stereotype that Timu only offers really generic items. Uh, again, these days you can find increasing amount of retailers partnering with them. The Xiaomi and Realme devices, for example, came in just around three days in my personal experience, which is really fast. I'd say it's been a fairly successful haul most of the items here I think have performed quite well. So if you've been a little hesitant to try out Timu in the past because of, again, less well-known brands, well, again, it just depends on if you're shopping a 
around and searching specifically for those or not. This serving as an example or survey of some more well-known brands and players that you can now find on the site. You can learn more details if interested in the links down below, but for now that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been again a closer look at some more useful slash cool tech products from Timu.